Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, and some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Angels with Scaly Wings, Anna's Path. Anyway, y'all, oh yeah, by the way, y'all, the Patreon is now up. I've got a link in the description of the video, y'all. Um, it's got three different tiers, it's got awesome exclusive benefits. The, the people who get the gold membership, they will get a custom made Discord badge, which, uh, you know, that's pretty nice. <laughs> pretty nice, not gonna lie. And uh, everyone who pays will also get a membership into the Discord server. So yeah, and, and if you don't, and if you like skip a skip a month or anything, if you or if you don't renew your membership, uh, you get still get permanent access as you're in the you are in that Discord server. So anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up. If I can find alarm chain. Oh, alarm chain. There we go. You're up. Let's go. All right, let's do it. All right. What should I look at? The lemon. Lemon. Lemons. Lemons. <laughs> Sounds like an internet historian. Lemons. 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 Of course. Why didn't I realize it sooner? Lemon juice is about the simplest way to write a hidden message using household items. We learned about that in chemistry. In the most boring detail, of course. A message written in lemon juice on paper becomes just about invisible to the naked eye when dried. But after heating it gently, oxidization occurs, making the message visible. I was sitting next to him in class when we learned that. He made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test, and I replied by saying he'd have to bring an iron. Had he really expected me to remember a random chemistry class that happened years ago? But then I did remember it after all. Meet me at the portal tonight at 10 p.m. was all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, but I still had some time left to, some time left before I had to go out to meet Reza, so I decided to make some lunch. I could have made some scrambled eggs if I hadn't broken them all earlier. Afterwards, I resumed reading my book about the continuing adventures of Sheridan and her exploits in destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprisingly, it came to a happy end, with the evil organization stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity, but then when I turned the page and saw that the advertisement for the next entry in this apparently long-running series of books, I realized all this had just been a ploy to set up the inevitable sequel. Luckily, the disappointment didn't last long as I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. When I got outside, it didn't—it didn't seem quite as dark as when I had, as when I as it didn't seem quite as dark as it was when I arrived yesterday. I might have had difficulties finding my way; otherwise, I could still see the portal in the distance. As I was walking, I wondered if anyone was following me, but the land seemed oddly deserted. Was everyone already asleep? Eventually, I arrived at my destination. Reza was already standing idly by the portal, his fidgeting making it obvious that he had waited just for me. I was already wondering whether you'd get it at all. <laughs> what a wonderful night it is. Just look up at the stars. You can see them so clearly without so clearly here, without all the pollution lingering in the air like, like back home. Almost as if we were looking right into the face of eternity itself. For so long, humanity thought we'd find aliens out there. Yet for all these years, we found we were still alone in the universe. Turns out we were just not looking in the right place. What's going on, Reza? Why did you call me here? At this time? For one, because we're sending the generator home. Right, before I was sent here, they told me that they would limit the use of the portal as they couldn't afford to keep it open all the time. In order to keep in contact with us and to enable us to send things over to them, the portal would be open for just a quarter of an hour each day. Sending something back home wasn't really problematic for us, since the high energy expenditure associated with sending bigger objects only affected the sender, not the receiver. However, this also meant that until all business was concluded in regards to our trade with the PDAs and the generators, we were basically stuck here. As for the other, you know what this place is. You said something about trouble. How much danger are we in, really? More than enough. I'm afraid this whole place will be gone soon, and we better not be here when it happens. You do? Well, then you know what we've got to do, right? Yeah. How did you find out? It took me quite a while, but maybe we can compare notes and make sure we're right. I'll be speaking, my gaze wandered and fixed on some movement nearby. It was hard to make it, to make out anything, but I imagine it might just have been the wind blowing through the nearby shrubbery, except for the fact that there was no wind. Reza. This might take a while to explain, but we've got the whole night. Reza, look! He turned around to face whatever I was seeing. He squinted hard before he called out. You! How dare you even follow me here? The disturbance came closer until it became clear that it was Maverick, who had hidden nearby to listen in on our, in on our conversation. I knew you were up to no good. What were you talking about? What are you planning here? Some kind of attack? 
One second now. Water time. Wait a minute. There's no reason for... Don't try to deny it. I heard you both talking about it in the cafe, and I saw the letter. I think I could smell the lemon on it. Pathetic. You'll have to come with me to the police station now. Both of you. Come on, you think- I think you're overreacting- Oh. Oh, shit. Reza, what are you doing? Come on, Keegan, let's get out of here. In the dragon's side, I could see the wound where the bullet had penetrated his hide. A trickle of blood staining his dark scales and the earth underneath. Reza used the opportunity to run off in some direction. I wasn't sure which. I frantically scanned my surroundings looking for Reza, though he had already vanished into the darkness. What was I supposed to do? Run away as well? Well, help! Help, Maverick? I was just a diplomat. I had no idea what was happening. Ow. Suddenly, the dragon whipped around, hitting me in the guts with his thick tail. I was lifted off the ground briefly before I felt the impact of my body hitting the ground hard enough that my vision blurred almost immediately. A deafening roar battered my ears. Was this his cry for help? I could barely move, but I found it better not to try, as to not startle the wounded dragon more than he already was. It certainly would have ended badly for me if he tried anything. I heard him take a few unsure steps before he lay down on the ground, panting. I'm still watching you, you know. You better not move for your own good. If I have to get up again and come after you in this condition, I can promise you it won't be nice. It took a few minutes of listening to his labored breathing before someone arrived. It was two dragons. The first I recognized as Sebastian, the other one I didn't know. I heard Sebastian and Maverick exchange a few words when the stocky fellow approached me. Bryce! Hey, kid, you alright? a little dizzy. I'm Bryce, the chief of police in this town. Can you tell me what happened? Ooh, excuse me. Is that so? His face was stern and seemingly lost in thought as I overheard Sebastian's conversation. Yeah, but you're the flyer on duty. We probably won't find him now. Not here in the darkness at any rate. Well, that's just brilliant. What do you think, chief? Keegan, can you walk? Yeah, I think so. All right, Sebastian, take Keegan to the apartment. Get us some help here for Maverick, and then we'll look for a, then we'll look for Reza. Right on. Come on, Keegan. I'll help you up. I was still shaken up by the events I just witnessed when I arrived at my apartment. Not knowing anything better to do, I soon fell into a deep slumber. The next day, I awoke with many questions lingering in my head. I considered calling someone from the police department to ask about Reza and Maverick, but in the end I decided against doing so as soon as I was sure they would contact me if I if they had anything to tell me. Hmm. I knew it was no use worrying about it for now, so I settled for starting for starting another book. It didn't take very long though, before the doorbell rang. Did Bryce did Bryce the Chief of Police take it upon himself to escort me today? Oh, it's you again. Are you surprised? No, but I guess it'll mean bad news. Afraid so. How are you holding up? Better than yesterday, that's for sure. Let's go for a walk then, shall we? Sure. This time I was taking along a different route than yesterday. I was quite sure there was more to this than just taking a walk. I'll just go ahead and guess you didn't find Reza. Yeah. We hoped he, we hoped he would have come back on his own by now. Do you have any idea where he might be? Maybe he mentioned some sort of place in particular that holds some meaning to him. No, not really. We didn't get a chance to talk talk much at all yesterday before. There's that, too. I have no idea why Reza would have done anything like that. I had the impression that they weren't very fond of each other, but this... How is he, by the way? Oh, Maverick is doing fine, but there's plenty of blame to go around. You're right. They didn't particularly like each other. In his statement, Maverick says he suspected Reza of planning some sort of attack. Do you know anything about that? No. He only told me something was going to happen. Not that he was planning anything. At least that was the impression I got. He's suspecting you too, by the way. They both planned this all from the beginning. No, that wouldn't make sense. Actually, none of this is making any sense. Why would we go through all the lengths of our agreement only to jeopardize it by doing something like this? Thank you, y'all. Water time. We even already have our PDAs and we don't have much to show for it yet. If we had any, had any nefarious plans, this wouldn't have been a very good idea. You have a good point. I believe you, but from our side, we only have Maverick's word on the whole matter. After all, he was the one who spent the most time with Reza since he arrived here. But even then, he didn't really have any reason to follow you yesterday, and his behavior was completely out of line. 
I'm just glad you came out fine. If he wasn't on mandatory sick leave, he would be suspended right now. We'll have to wait until this whole thing is over before we decide what to do with him. I can assure you this won't be taken lightly. Uh... Maybe. We still got quite a lot of our quite a lot on our hands now, though. We have a wounded dragon and a missing human. This could lead to a diplomatic crisis. Maybe Reza will still show up soon, and we can get all and we can get all this behind us. I hope so too. I really wouldn't want to jeopardize everything over this unfortunate incident. Yeah. How about we both just keep quiet about this whole thing for now? After all, I don't think any of us wants our people panicking. Our people panicking about this already, right? I really nodded in agreement. Eventually, we arrived at the police station, where the chief took my formal statement in regard to yesterday's events. He asked me about Reza and Maverick, too. Not that I knew much of anything that preceded yesterday's events or the mysterious catastrophe Reza had mentioned. Afterwards, he thanked me and left, the, and, left, and left to file my statement while I sat by his table, waiting and listening to the goings-ons of this small provincial, provincial town police department. When he returned, he was approached by someone who seemed to have urgent news. A lot of talking between the two ensued that I, that I couldn't make out for my position. This went on for a bit, until Bryce returned to me. Ready to have more bad news for you. Reza has now officially become a murder suspect. M murder? We're headed to the crime scene, and I hope you'd come You hope you'd come with us. Me? A, a crime scene? I really don't know much about forensics. It's just that you're the only link to Reza we have. Consider what he said about- consider what he said would happen to us. It's in all of our interests that we find him as soon as possible, and if he has anything to do with it, you might be able to help us find him. Your cooperation would certainly be appreciated, and it would be a nice gesture to show us that you're trustworthy in the eyes of those who might think otherwise after what happened yesterday. Will you help us? I suppose I don't really have much choice here, but you're right. We've got to find Brezen. If that's what it takes, then I'll do it. Very well. Let us go, then. On our way to the crime scene, he tried to- he tried to prepare me for what- for- he tried to prepare me for what- for- blah. He tried to prepare me for what would come. Sorry, y'all. I've had a long day. I had studied biology, so I was familiar with the sight of dead animals, asking myself how similar this would be, and I wondered if my reaction would be any different if I wasn't a dra if it wasn't a dragon, but a human corpse I would be seeing. When we arrived, we were met by Sebastian, who gave us an overview of the whole situation. This morning, the victim was found by a delivery flyer for a restaurant. Blood loss from multiple wounds are the likely cause of death. Forensics was already here, but feel free to poke around. A few paces in front of us, the unfortunate victim lay on the ground, covered by a sheet that concealed the body, but not the large red stain beneath. We approached, while Sebastian went off to deter any curious onlookers. I know it won't be pretty, and I'm sorry for putting you through this, but you know what's at stake here. Just remember what I told you, and you should be fine. Alright? Are you ready? I guess so. One second, y'all. Water time. Alrighty. Yeah. So sad. Oh, killing the sweet, sweet dragons. Oh, yep. Blood on the mouth. What do you think? Well, he's definitely dead. Yeah, rest in peace. Let's just say this will be your test. And tell me what you can deduce from what you see. Give it your best shot. Two wings, two legs, just like the waitress in the cafe. About as big as a human, lengthwise, if not slightly small, slightly taller. The wingspan would certainly look impressive at that size. The wounds are kind of hard to miss. True, but what are they telling you? It's usually large or small person. <laughs> oh my god! Jeez. We're inflicted with a sharp implement. They're clean cuts, like from a knife or another sharp instrument. That is true, but why does this matter? Dragons don't use knives, maybe? Uh, and, uh... I'm gonna save it after each one. Dragons don't use knives. I mean, they can clearly use knives. Oh, yeah, okay. Fuck that up. Yeah, okay. Someone with hands. 
That's right. Only those of us who walk on two legs have the proper dexterity to wield a knife effectively. Most of the dragons would probably just bite instead. Of course, this rules out the mo most of the bigger dragons and flyers. But then, Reza still has his. What was it called again? You mean his gun? Yeah, if it was him, why would he kill someone with a knife rather than just use his gun on him? It wouldn't because it wasn't him. Because it was it's clearly a suicide. Oh my god. I not want to make any noise. He did not want to make any noise. After all, he ran away from Maverick, trying to hide from the police. Something as loud as a gunshot would have easily given away his position and alerted others in the area. Right, that could be a good reason. By the way, which which wound do you think was a lethal one? Uh, yeah, probably that one. All right, y'all, I'm actually going to pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And uh, don't forget, y'all, to check out the Patreon. Any support is definitely, definitely uh, appreciated, especially with our bills being as high as they are. But anyway, y'all, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.